Hello and welcome to the big picture. For a long time one can safely say the elections to the Delhi Assembly has not been fought so intensely and if one may add so bitterly. With the voting to the elections just about 12 hours away, all eyes across the country are focused on the outcome here. The campaign has seen the three major political parties putting their all into it. However, it's evident that the battle is now between the two parties, the BJP and the Amadmi party. The two parties, both very savvy when it comes to publicity and usage of social media, has matched move for move. For the BJP, these elections are very important as the national party has staked its all. The Prime Minister's intense campaign has meant he has staked this personal image and put all his political weight behind it. On the other hand, for the Amadmi party also, the stakes are equally high. However, what are the issues which will be critical in the minds of the voters when they queue up tomorrow to vote? And how have the parties fared in addressing these issues? We will discuss this today with Ved Marwa, former governor and also former Delhi Police Commissioner, Shalja Chandra, former Chief Secretary of Government of Delhi, Rakesh Sina, Director India Policy Foundation, Dilip Charyan, founder of Perfect Relations, and Vandita Mishra, National Opinion Editor at the Indian Express. Welcome to all of you. Rakesh Sina, I would like to come to you first. What do you think are the critical issues or factors which will decide uh, the voters' choice tomorrow? I think Delhi election has a different pattern. I am saying different pattern because you just see in the last Delhi election and this election within a year, they, all the political parties articulated every day's need has become an ideology. They have articulated every day's need, the problems of the people. This shows that the capital city of India has been facing a lot of trouble and problems like corruption. If you are going to make your building or mend your building, you have to pay the money to the police and the civic administrator. Secondly, the, the population pressure on the Delhi is creating problem for just like electricity, water, these things. So there is no organized and systematic policy for the Delhi, Delhi as a city, capital city of the country. So the local people are facing a lot of huge problems. Even the people who are coming outside, you can't, you can't stop because it's a capital city. I think that this is, this is the region that uh, admission in schools, the electricity problem, water problem, they all become ideological issues. And other, the, the conventional ideological issues have been pushed into the background. This is the, I think this is the first election in the 2013, uh, 13, it, was, it, it took place 2013-14 and this 15, that I have no ideological issues here. Oh, the, oh, another dimension of this election, just I am uh, ending here, another dimension of this election is that anti-BJPism is being experimented in Delhi that uh, Prakash Karat, the social base which communist party should have enjoyed, the, the proletariat whom, whom they call, they are writing obituary, they are supporting Aam Aadmi party, their cadres are shrinking. The socialists, the, the, the base which should have been the J, JDU and RJD, they are shrinking to Aam Aadmi party. Okay. So, Aam Aadmi party has emerged here as a kind of a new socialist in Delhi. So, the, 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 and all the other parties which, which are inimical or detrimental to the BJP, they are supporting Ahmadi party. That's why this election has assumed some significance at the national level. Okay, that's very interesting. I think you have made very interesting point. Vandita, Vandita you, have, you have been going around and you have uh, you written about uh, these elections also. Do you, do you think what the Rakesh Sinha is saying, that ideological issues that the typical ideology, ideological issues have taken back the uh, back seat and people's day to day problems have become the major issue. I think you know uh, the problem of Bijli, Sadak, Pani, Seaver connection, uh, you know the, the school or uh, of everyday corruption that people have to face who interface with the government daily. These are not new problems. The These city resident has faced them earlier. They have also been part or they have also been the stuff of election campaigns earlier. But there is definitely something new and I think that newness is the tone that was set by the Aam Aadmi Party because Aam Aadmi Party took its birth in the city. So I think it is a party of the city which front-paged the, uh, the concerns of the city 
in a way that the others were then uh, constrained to follow very reluctantly very unwillingly but the congress was also forced to promise 1.50 rupee per unit electricity the bjp was also forced to talk about unauthorized colonies and their legalization so it was i think the newness is that for the first time a party born in the city uh, made talking about city concerns civic amenities the pressure of migration uh, the problem of living sub legally illegally uh, into the main election issue but the other point that uh, the speaker before me uh, talked about which is that it is the crucible for a new anti modi or an anti bjp politics i am not sure this is the first time that experiment is being tried out i think that was tried out in bihar Bihar by elections when Lalu and Nitish old foes came together to fight the BJP that was where it started but yes the fact that um, a left a CPM which has so far regarded the Aam Aadmi Party as the outsider the upstart uh, and an NGO kind of a formation rather than a political party of its own standing the fact that they can offer support to the Aam Aadmi Party now and other parties like the Trinamool i think it it it's got symbolic value and it could be the beginning of something new okay that's very interesting uh, mr marwa to marwa you have been a you have been a witness to every election probably which has happened in delhi in the you know ever since it has been taking place do you see anything different in these elections from what you have witnessed in the past well there is no doubt about it that what one is seeing today in delhi is something absolutely new uh, elections have never been fought in the manner in which they are being fought today uh, and that is one of the dimensions of what is happening to our politics in the whole country and uh, there, there is a new uh, uh, voter population which is now demanding uh, specific concrete uh, um, um, policy uh, policies uh, for their benefit and that's happening in delhi uh, but here in addition you have two very um, important what should i say personalities uh, kejriwal and king bedi who are also uh, the uh, media is focusing uh, on them and that has made the elections even uh, more interesting but i think what is not happening and that is unfortunate that they are both sides are promising the moon but they are not saying how th the three sides to actually three sides <laughs> well, the third side unfortunately is being written off by the by all the polls and the media so, let's say three three side they are not saying how they are going to achieve them because delhi has very serious systemic problem uh, you have and you have uh, the example of whenever things go wrong no authority in delhi takes responsibility each one throws the blame on, on the other center on the state state on the, uh, the somebody else so that is what needs to be addressed the chief minister is um, the um, the prospective chief ministers are promising delhi security how are they going to provide security yeah, yeah, police, they, police is not even under them <laughs> police is not even under them and they are promising security women's security or other other security and the dda is not um, in, uh, under them under them it, it, so you know these are issues which we require delhi is not a normal state like other states in the country uh, the um, it doesn't have many powers but it has a whole paraphernalia of secretariat Shalaja Chandra is here. She was chief secretary. She knows it better than anybody else. That you have this whole lot of processing, uh, administrative processing, uh, which goes on. But at the end of the day, very little comes out. Absolutely, Shalaja Chandra. You think that you know these issues are be, have been addressed in these elections? You, 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 what, what, what? According to you, Mr. Marwa says that you know all the parties are promising the moon, but. you think any of that can be easily achieved or achieved at all it can be achieved partially and not all the promises that are being made are uh, in any way retrograde what is in a way irresponsible is that fully knowing that the budget is not available and you will never have the courage to tax the aspirational uh, delhi citizens any more than they are already taxed in fact one party has even talked of reducing vat vat is your major source of uh, revenue if 
those kinds of uh, you might say populist measures are announced and taken forward you will never have the money to do even a tenth of what you have promised. promised the only way it can happen is if you tax more or delhi is given partial statehood it is treated as a state i must uh, bring to your notice that the constitutional <laughs> amendment yes the constitutional amendment through which delhi became the gn city of delhi has given whole lot of entries of the state list and the concurrent list to delhi only police law and order and land is not there there are about 60 such entries on one side and 47 such entries where delhi is totally competent constitutionally to be making its laws but that is precluded because whole lot of acts which were made by parliament have not been with an omnibus order set aside to give the authority to the chief minister but none of these issues are are, are uh, have been have been no, i want to debated by the political parties during the election no, but i'm saying this because you asked me is it feasible yes. what i'm saying is it is feasible were the constitutional provisions to be followed and not violated no, if they are followed question, yes the question we will we will come to, we will have a discussion separately on this once the new new government is formed but you don't think you do, you, you didn't see any serious debate on these issues no because the, the fact that you don't have money is something well known it should have been addressed number 2 what should have been addressed is the issues which are consuming the public pollution it is huge absolutely pollution is something which no political party uh, seems to have to do spoken it. about in these elections at all maybe they must have mentioned it in their manifesto or vision documents but it has not become a, a major election issue uh, dilip dilip you know one of the major things in this election has been the kind of publicity blitz which has happened in this huh? you think how far do you think in, in from your past experiences of having dealt with political parties seen elections closely the, how much does this publicity uh, actually help in you know making a choice as far as the voters are concerned okay let me first begin by setting a context what rakesh said and what vandita said there's a very interesting um, string that uh, ties it up delhi in a sense this this election in a sense is a harbinger of elections sometime in the future and what do i mean by 2030 90% of the world's population is going to live in mega cities and delhi is a mega city in the last 30 years delhi has had immigration which you talked about uh, people coming in 90% of the city today is come in 30 within the last 30 years so the entire character of the city has changed right and therefore communicating to them getting messages across to them is not only expensive is also based on non traditional methods uh, which means advertising and things like that simply because this is a new class of creature that actually is of voting age and is going to decide how delhi will vote so first you are actually setting up a model for what's going to happen across the country at some in major centers across the country because India is also becoming you, as you, urban you as Delhi. You can't have you uniform can't. publicity strategies. And this ideology battles will will be replaced across many many more constituencies by what seem to be bread and butter issues. So this is something that political parties have to begin to grapple with. People right. are talking not about you know what is your view on Cuba, but they are going to talk about what is your price of electricity. and obama coming is not going to be affect the voters it's, it's not going to affect the voter because they are concerned with bread and butter issues and this is the direction of where political ideology driven parties are going to face a conundrum once you remove ideology then the need to market yourself using advertising radio television bombarding people with images is going to actually rise because you are no longer dependent on their value or belief system and you are actually going to market your potential chief minister to people who otherwise are not really concerned with politics on a daily basis that's very interesting so you are trying to say that but i the primary question which i asked is how much of all this publicity blitz is is affects actually the voter affects that actually the voter and makes him make a choice the delhi voter i think is likely to be more affected by advertising and publicity than the voter in say a semi urban or rural center okay so, so it's a significant rakesh sila you think that the political parties have taken note of this you know as you rightly right at the beginning pointed out bread and what you know dilip has 
put it very succinctly saying bread and butter issues you think that this is this is going to be the pattern in other places or you think political parties in, in a place like delhi have had to change their strategies so i don't think that delhi will uh, De delhi pattern will be followed in other states here i i want to point out the two things the demographic character has changed in delhi and this demographic character the, uh, the the contribution of the bimaru states is more than any uh, any uh, right uh, richer states in india and the people who are in delhi the newcomers in delhi they are facing the, a lot of problems they are voters also and uh, bread and butter issues affect them uh, most uh, both the national parties congress and bjp could not address this demographic change in their organizational pattern number one bjp is slightly in better position because bjp has the backing of the rss which works in all the societies so its organizational vacuum is being complemented or or fulfilled by rss here am aadmi party has set a advantage that advantage is that most of the national parties the social base of the upper strat of the leaders exemplify or reflect the luxurious car the right. and the luxurious lifestyle these uh, the, these create problem with the people and there is a kind of disillusionment with the people there is a, there is a disconnect that's why anna movement was was uh, was governing the people who were disillusioned with the established politics and conventional politics here the, the, that advantage arvind kejriwal and his party has uh, to certain extent uh, this is also a lesson for the political parties it is not merely the ideology it is also the values you practice it is not merely that you are uh, preaching the equality you have to also show the leadership like din dayal upadhyay ram manohar lohia they were they they, they negated even the communist by their austerity by their lifestyle here here, uh, here i say that both the national parties in delhi are failing in that regard they have good leaders they have good honest leaders but identification of the common people is essential for the good and the uh, even the people who who enjoy austerity who who practice okay i mean the, i rakesh i think you have made a very interesting point uh, vandita Hello? vandita the the, the Hello? question Phone yeah gaya hai. yeah vandita i can hear you can you hear me I uh, will will go back to one with the one uh, Shalya Chandra. Is this is this some kind of a? Is there? Do you see in these elections? I want all all three of you to re react to it. Some kind of a class, dif uh, you know, difference coming in. W will that class difference decide the the voting pattern of people? Well, I think people from the slum areas and those who are the working class, the basic people, and who are you might say even among government servants, <coughs> those who are working at the what we used to in the old days call class 4 and the lower grade of class 3 these people are overwhelmingly feeling yahan sunai nahi hoti hai it could be because there was president's rule there was no political interface it could be because of that but wherever one goes one gets this refrain aane do dusre party ko ap ko aur hum inko sabak sikha denge so that feeling is there second there is a genuine belief that corruption stopped in 49 days it may be a legend it may be untrue but anyone from this class whom you talk about believes that it is possible and it is possible only with the danda and that danda does not come by sitting on a chair it comes by knowing what is happening on so, the ground so no no I, the larger the larger question which i am asking about so the, you you find that there is a, that those class under class seems a, to be associating themselves more with yes, the amadmi yes, party yes they have an exasperation they have so, an anger so you, right and, and so you you are you are saying that there is some kind of a class divide there is a definite class divide okay i i think we got vandita back on vandita do you think that this election should be decided on the basis of class divide sorry on the basis of the class divide hello class divide class divide of the class divide yes yes uh from uh, yeah from uh, i have reported this election i tried uh, you know i wandered around the city talking to people and uh, my impression is uh, certainly that there was a, a certain class divide uh, that was visible uh, that demarcated or that uh, separated the low, what we call the lower class from the middle and the upper classes and uh, i think it's a simple distinction between people who uh, take civic amenities for granted people who don't and people who face petty corruption of the government in a daily sense 
and people who do, people who can afford to barricade themselves and uh, cocoon themselves uh, and in a sense uh, secede, uh, who have seceded from the government because they can afford to do so. Right. So there is a class divide and I think it has some worrying implications for the gov whichever government comes into power because uh, whichever government comes into power it will need to address this okay. and reach out. Okay, Mr. Marwa. <coughs> I look at this so-called class divide a little differently. I think it is for the first time that a voter in India and especially in Delhi is now believes that they can change the government. And that cynicism before the thing will remain the same is no longer there. Now they think that they can decide who will form the government and they want and make and ensure and demand that they, they get what yeah, they want. And they will give their vote to the person or to the party who they believe will address their basic problem, which an average citizen, especially the one who are the marginalized uh, sections of the society, feel uh, in places like Sangam, Vihar and the other. You know, when you look at the facil civic facilities, they are abysmal and nobody was addressing them. But that stage is gone. Okay. Uh, uh, Rakesh Sinha, uh, sorry, I will we'll go to uh, Dilip. Is, is, is this not about personalities? Is this not a Modi versus Kejriwal battle, Modi or Kejriwal versus Kiran Bedi? What has happened? I think the, um, the fact is that whether it's Modi versus Kejriwal or Kejriwal versus Kiran Bedi, that class, that class divide is there too. In a sense, what you're saying is that the personalities that have chosen to be in the fray also reflect, reflect to some extent, this caste, uh, this class divide in, in Delhi, and there the, the 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 likelihood of this being a kind of uh, watershed election from that point of view is very high. Um, when one, oh, I, I speak to a lot of people because of other reasons on on behalf of uh, communications challenges we are facing with clients. Uh, the voting is also going to be divided pretty much this way. The big change that has happened since 2013 is that a significant part of the upper middle class is no longer fans of Kejriwal. So that change has happened but that actually helps to make this class divide as it were stronger. 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 Okay. Uh, Vandita, it is, is, I mean you said you have been yeah. traveling, you have been talking to people. Is it not anymore about personalities? Is it not a, a Kejriwal versus Modi? <laughs> Or Kiran Bedi, Kiran Bedi versus Kejriwal? I think uh, there were two distinct personalities in the fray. Uh, there was <coughs> Kejriwal because uh, what, whatever the Aam Aadmi Party stands for, Kejriwal is completely and wholly I, uh, the face of it. It is not, for instance, I found that uh, the Aam Aadmi voter in almost 90% of the cases is not voting for his local candidate. He is not voting for the local candidate put up by the Aam Aadmi Party. He is voting in the name or he, she is voting in the name of Arvind Kejriwal. The other distinct personality was Mo, is Modi or was Modi but the Delhi voter makes the distinction that this is not a prime ministerial election. So uh, the BJP has perhaps lost out there in terms of not having a mascot. Uh, Kiran Bedi could not become a mascot. Uh, she was brought in at the last minute and she did not have that kind of resonance for the BJP voter. Uh, and Mo uh, Modi failed to become a mascot because uh, the Delhi voter knows this is not the central election, this is a Delhi election. So there I think the one figure that really stood out whether the, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party wins or loses this election, I think it was the personality of Arvind Kejriwal who, as I said, completely dominated his party. Okay, that's interesting. Shalya Chandra, is that how you look at it? That yes. you know, th that it is one dominant personality and <coughs> other personality is all following in the... Yes, definitely. You see, Kejriwal has marketed himself. No, but it, there, there is also a negative anti-Kejriwal feeling also. No, that anti-Kejriwal feeling is this upper middle class who were exasperated by his dharnas and his walking out on the government. That has not changed. Everybody behind the scenes says, God knows what he'll do this time. Should we waste our vote? That is there. 
but that chunk does not count for all that much. Remember, all these people ultimately will go to the hills and go and have a weekend and they say, what is the election? So the real people who seem to want to vote and who are will, willing to give anything to cast that vote seem to have the feeling that the Sunwai will be better addressed by Kejriwal and they wouldn't feel the divide that comes when there is a very large party with whom they have to go step by step. Here they've given the impression, Kejriwal at least has, that they are very accessible. That in Delhi, it is not possible to be that accessible. We know that last time when he formed the government and he tried to address all the public grievances on a platform, it was not possible. But I think in Delhi, the issues which have to be grappled are issues of service delivery, of getting the officers to be accountable and stopping this alibi culture. Okay. That is not going to be so easy for anyone to Okay, Mr. To Marwa, very quickly. You know, in, in a Delhi, BJP has a problem. BJP has a problem because the leadership in Delhi, the traditional leadership in Delhi is not a very active and a very popular leadership. BJP has lost last four, uh, three, three, four elections and uh, the, all the forecast was there that till the Kiran Bedi had come they were not doing uh, very well. So this particular bringing in Kiran Bedi at this least, uh, late stage will be able to Fill that gap is uh, again it's a, it's a, it's a question. Point. It's a question which will have, which, which we'll know very soon. I think uh, uh, you know it's a fascinating election. As all my uh, panelists have said, I'm sorry I can't I couldn't have I couldn't go back to Mr. Rakesh Sinha with, with, with the who, where there's an audio problem there. Uh, thanks to all my guests. We'll wait and watch how the voter of Delhi will react tomorrow. Thanks to all my guests who have been, uh, you know, who have given very interesting insights into how the voter may vote tomorrow. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time tomorrow.